my twister coming apart from heaven back with another video and uh goddamn my twister coming apart fuck my life uh on a rainy day where it's very cool and enjoyable outside i decided to watch a new movie a uh, movie called uh bullet train not mugen train which was a japanese influenced piece of art that had the word train in it that i enjoyed quite a bit that i watched the same movie theaters as i watched bullet train at Bullet Train, I'm going to keep it short because it's not a spectacular movie by any means. Um, but it's not as bad as I saw on Metacritic before watching the movie. Um, and, you know, they do say happiness. Comparison is a thief of joy. And um, and I, if I compare this movie to some of the movies that it makes me think of, uh, those movies were really landscape, uh, uh, land shattering event um and i don't think this is that but i mean if you enjoyed a kick-ass if you enjoyed a scott pilgrim versus the world um something that reflects heavily on source material and i think does a commendable job of being enjoyable uh even if it may deviate from said source material i don't know what the fucking book was like i i know what scott pilgrim's comics were like i, don't, I think kick-ass had a book that it came from anyway the point being a uh, nerdy ass movie that uh draws heavily from outside influences um it tries to be kishy and quirky uh very often uh sometimes successfully sometimes you know a little bit eh, maybe cringy um but, I mean, you go for, like, a legacy act, Caucasian actor as the main guy, as Brad Pitt is, uh, which isn't an insult to be a legacy act. I mean, you know, you succeed for 30, 40 years, you know, you kind of deserve, you know, you know, to be put in a certain standard. Um, and I feel like it's something that's a little bit out, outside of his general wheelbarrow, and he did a great job, I think, of adjusting to it. Um, I thought the casting was fantastic. Uh, is it a better casting than Oppenheimer or Oppenheimer or uh, Amsterdam? No, it's not. I hate Oppenheimer, but it's not. Oh, fuck. I didn't think about that. Finally, a motherfucking movie that didn't shove Oppenheimer up the collective of the movie watchers. Holy shit. I've, I think I was on a, a two movie or a three movie streak. Actually, two movie because it was Nope and then it was Superhero uh, Dragon Ball. Uh, a two movie streak where there's the most fucking intrusive, annoying fucking trailers. Fucking Oppenheimer. It, it pisses me the fuck off. The fact that they put... I'm not going to go back into it. But Oppenheimer go fuck itself. Um, Amsterdam has a fucking crazy cast. If you are like a cast watcher, which... You know, some people are meat watchers. Uh, some people are bird watchers. Motherfucker, I love a good cast. And that cast. Holy shit. Um, but this was a, a fantastic cast. Um... I thought the guy, I'm not going to say who it was, but I thought the guy was Tommy Wiseau uh, for the long... He has a very Tommy Wiseau uh, hairstyle as if, like, if Tommy Wiseau was, like, going gray, which I assumed... I watched The Room, like, that came out, you know, 20, 30 years ago. I mean, I didn't watch it then, but it came out around the time. So, I mean, it'd be reasonable if somebody has gray hair. I, apparently, uh, it's not Tommy Wiseau. Uh, but... It's Michael Shannon, who is also in Amsterdam. Uh, you have Paperboy. I know it's fucking denigrated to call him Paperboy, but I don't know what his name is. Brian, Brian Tyree Henry, or I, I believe. Uh, Brian Tyree Henry, I believe. Um, you got another guy who's I know a pretty big actor that I don't know, but he's somewhat related to Brian Tyree Henry. I'm not going to say who, you know who. Uh, Zazie Beats. Uh, Joey King, who... I know of, but not know. Obviously, Brad. Uh, really good casting, you know, to me. Uh, some other guys that, you know, have done some things. But I loved, I, loved, I loved the environment of the movie. I mean, it feels... It goes from feeling very populous to very empty pretty quickly. Uh, which plays into the plot. You know, like, literally, that, that course of events plays into the plot. But, um... The idea of doing wacky show in a train, I think, does... Uh, to me, you know, as an anime motherfucker, that does speak to me for, for Mugen Train, which is one of the biggest Japanese movies of all time. So, I mean, it's not like it would be an insult to play off of Mugen Train a little bit. But uh, it doesn't wear its Japanese influences too heavy. Like, it's it's more spotted than I, I think you uh, maybe let on at the very beginning. Uh, it's, it's, 
it's not necessarily an homage either, but it's just, it's done tastefully, you know, and it's not always just some cringeworthy, like, oh, you're an American, and you fucking see something Japanese, and it's just fucking funny to you, ha, ha, fuck you, um, it's not like that, per se, uh, I'm not sure if the characters are American in the casting, uh, uh in the course, the actual book itself, I would imagine that that clashing and conflict of these fucking wacky foreigners in a Japanese landscape, even though the landscape feels very not Japanese for the majority of the movie, um, I imagine that clashing and conflict is supposed to be actually part of the book. I, I think that would make it infinitely more interesting than if it wasn't. Um, but I like to be said, you know, I, th- I thought it was a good movie. The score wasn't anything crazy to me. Uh, I did like they did a Japanese rendition of a very popular uh american song uh that was cool score wasn't crazy but it, it was it was all right um like i said the environment was, was you know it was, it was all right it was solid I, I i enjoyed it uh colors wise not as interesting as you may have like a japanese movie be i think japanese movies jap japanese related content always to me has some of the craziest fucking colors uh and this didn't kind of speak to that although i'm just a sucker for neon shit uh kiss land by weekend the the neon bullshit neon green everything with that that presentation of that album just has a soft spot in my heart and with being in tokyo you kind of just hope the guy that they'd kind of take some likeness from that but unfortunately they didn't which i mean it's not a bland movie visually speaking there's obviously a couple of cool shots uh there's one with i believe um i want to say uh Joey King and Brian Tyree Henney's uh, characters. It's a really cool shot that's kind of... I'm not good at, at looking for uh, film structure, cinematography, things of that nature. I'm awful at it, actually. But it's kind of just a certain way that the char- the the, the, char- the, char- the camera is pointing and a certain slanted perspective you get as a viewer. That was one of my favorite shots in the entire movie that really stood out to me. Um, and uh, a couple of very odd CGI, like, almost like weirdly bad cgi shots towards the the back end like ha 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 we're laughing at how bad cgi uh is intentionally i think that's kind of what it was going for like, it was very odd product placement uh that looked completely out of I, I don't know the last like third of that movie i think the last third like the last fucking like five minutes ten minutes of that movie are just like a fucking fever dream uh really <laughs> Really wonky shit does not fit in the scope of the rest of that movie at all. Uh, but, but uh, I mean, it's it's not a masterpiece by any means. It's not as good as Kick-Ass or Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which I compare every fucking kind of whimsical... Not whimsical. Um, pointed, laughing at itself type uh, campy movie. Uh, that's just my go-to Scott Pilgrim. It's my favorite movie of all time. So uh, It's not those two by any means. It would probably, if it was made in 2013 or 14, fall woefully short in being a, a byproduct of those two movies. But I thought it was a good movie. I mean, all things considered, uh, I mean, it wasn't amazing. It was fun. I enjoyed it. It was a two-hour movie, and uh, you had reasons to continue to watch it all throughout. Uh, they, they do a good job of kind of tying everything together towards the back end, even though I will, like, it's not meant to be a, necessarily a, a, entirely of a, of a mystery. I thought there's some twists that I think you there's some twists that i think you may not have guessed i mean like not everybody would have guessed most of those twists i was probably think most people would not have guessed every single twist this movie kind of throws out there in the, the last leg of it but i enjoyed it uh, i really enjoyed joey king um joey king is very uh very uh engaging actress i'll, I'll give her the very very engaging uh, that's it for me i don't really shouldn't be this long of a review it's not that in-depth a movie uh, it's fun if you want a fun movie, that's a good way to kill about two hours or so. Uh, that probably won't make you won't make you think that much, and may be good to bring you know a brother or, or you know maybe even a very um, excitable partner that's a female. Uh, if you have if you're a guy with a male partner, it just shouldn't really be a problem bringing the male partner. But if you're a guy with a girl partner, or I don't know, I guess two girls with each other bringing each other. I think you may also enjoy this as well. <laughs> uh, I give like a, I, I actually love them show that out of ten. I'm because I, I feel like five is always kind of hard to contest, but actually this time I wanted to do it out of five because I don't feel as absolutely worthy of a seven out of ten. But at the same time, it's like 
it's not as it doesn't feel like a six out of ten, and I feel like I'm being a uh a pussy if I give it a three uh six point five. So I'll just say three out of five. That feels like a very it's not four out of five by any measure, and it's not two out of five. So three out of five feels less contextual and asks less of me to uh rate this movie off. So that's it for me. Uh bullet train not a train wreck per se. Uh, I know some fucking dude on People Magazine or some fucking idiot and letterbox used a train wreck joke by now. It's not bad. It's okay. It's not. It's mid. And mid not mid does not mean bad per se. It just means it's mid. It's okay. It's dull. It's solid. It's decent. It's a movie that has reason to exist. And that's all you can ask for at the end of the day.